this is the story of Gao in China. So well, first of all, I'd kayaked from London to France over a couple of days, got on my bike Hercules and then cycled eastwards through Europe and Asia. So by the time I reached Western China, I'd probably been on the road for April, May, June, three months. And I met Gao, this young Chinese guy, in a petrol station one day. Uh, my bike was parked outside, I'm inside choosing some food, and he came in and he was so excited by and interested in my bike. And he said he would like to make a bike journey one day. But he said, I don't know how, it looks so difficult. And I said, oh buddy, it's just riding a bike, you'll be fine. Just get a bag and go, go and have a go. Because I think often the difficult thing is starting something. And actually once you go, well then you just get on with it, don't you? So I wished Gao good luck, and I said, I hope you let me know one day how you get on with your bike adventure. And he did. Half an hour later, <laughs> I was cycling down the road eating my breakfast when Gao pulled up in his car, horn honking, and he sprints across the road shouting, Sarah, you need a companion. I want to come to Beijing with you on a bicycle. <laughs> Did that just happen? And he went on to tell me how it'd be great if we cycled together. He said, Sarah, you be the leader. I'll be the translator and the guide. And I said, Gao, it's going um, to be really hot down the road in the desert. I mean, it's great you want to come cycling, but it's really hot. Do you know how hot it is? And I sort of found myself telling him all the reasons why actually I didn't think he should come with me, but being a bit British about it and trying to go around the back door. And Gao was coming up with all these reasons why, of course, it would be fine. Oh, Sarah, we'll travel at night when it's colder. We'll buy food and water. It'll be fine. And I had this sort of eureka moment of thinking, Sarah, you're a muppet. You've just told him anyone can go cycling. And now you're trying to tell him that he can't come with you. And so I said, yes, of course you can come. Let's meet in two days' time. And he said, brilliant, I'll go and buy a bike. <laughs> For real, he didn't have a bike. At which point I sort of say, ha ha, ha yes, a bike, good one. And I said, have you done much cycling? And he said, oh, you know, a few, few kilometres. And I quickly learned that he'd, he'd never camped before. He didn't really have much of an idea about what it might be useful to take with him. So I wrote him a shopping list, underlining tent. <laughs> Get to your own tent. <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd said to him, so how are you feeling, Gao? And he said, oh, you know, I'm quite nervous. He said, I was so nervous I couldn't sleep last night. And I said, that's fine. The main thing is, are you excited? And he said, Sarah, I'm always excited. And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm getting that impression from you. <laughs> uh, so strange and Gao, all ready to go cycling. Uh, note he's got a modestly sized flag on the back of his bike and a few on the front. Uh, that's because he'd seen the little flags on the back of my bike, kind of courtesy flags, you know, Great Britain, China, Expedition and so on. And apparently his brother had said to him, Gao, you need a Chinese flag, but it must be bigger than Sarah's. <laughs> so he, he won that one. And, and off we went, cycling out into the desert very quickly in extremely hot temperatures, sort of 50 degrees in the middle of the day uh, and often sort of 30 or something at night, uh, and often not great road conditions, to say the least. So uh, it was quite, quite the learning curve for Gal, sort of thrown straight into it. And because of my schedule, you know, I was thinking, I've got to make the Russian East Coast by September before the sea freezes. So I had this much greater kind of sense of pressure of just got to keep going, just got to keep going. Uh, and, and he did brilliantly well to, to settle into that quite mad routine and, and keep up with it. So uh, it was a wonderful month that we spent together, um, cycling together, doing everything together, learning from each other uh, and sort of about each other, I suppose, and, and our different worlds and so on. It kind of grew to be great pals and it turned out to be one of the best parts of my journey. So uh, I think Gal's just such a, a great, inspiring, kind of heartwarming story for everyone. I think really kind of fits in also with sort of YHA's ethos of um, kind of youth development. I mean, just seeing how happy he is at having achieved something that he didn't think he could do and uh, that idea of being empowered by it to, to go and face his future without fear is, is so huge. So I'm so happy and glad that Gao uh, was brave enough to ask me if he could come cycling and that I was sensible enough to say yes. Um, so that is the story of Gao.